So my next video was gonna be on a specific episode of the Kirby anime, but then, you know, this game came out and, well, uh, I have my priorities. I mean, this is a Bendy game after all. Yeah, you know, Bendy, literally my favorite horror game ever. It's been over a year since we've had anything Bendy related in game form. So of course I gotta do a video on this game as soon as possible, and that's what we're doing today. So let's dive into the world of Bendy once again. In this game, you play as Boris, and that much should be obvious from the title of the game. Your objective is to take the elevator to different floors of the studio scavenging for supplies. But you're not the only one down there because Bendy has returned, and he's hunting for you. The only way to get away from him is hide using your environment or in one of the little miracle stations or running away from him. But once he sees you, he will continue to chase you forever unless you hide in one of the stations, which I will admit is a tad annoying, but I suppose the game would be a bit too easy if you could just run and lose sight of him considering how much faster you are than him. Speaking of which, you're only faster than him if you're running, and running drains your bacon soup meter, and once that runs out, you can no longer run. So you'll need to swing by the bacon soup stations every now and then to make sure you're able to run from Bendy when needed. Once you grab all the needed supplies, you then run for the elevator, and it's at this point that Bendy knows your location at all times, so you better grab those bacon soups as often as possible. My cat is at my window. Are you serious? That is horrible timing. The levels get bigger and bigger as you progress through each day, making it harder and harder to find the needed supplies, and also easier for you to get lost. But after a while, you notice the game just keeps going, and never seems to end until you discover your true objective. You see, the one thing I didn't mention is throughout the studio, there is lockers you can unlock and find scraps or music tracks. The music tracks are just little things to collect for fun to listen to while in the safe house. But the scraps, however, are what you really want to go for as collecting all seven is how you get the ending. While I won't spoil the ending for those of you who haven't seen it, collecting the scraps is the true objective. So if you are planning on playing this game, please don't waste your time. Search for the scraps first, then if you want to go on a fun little adventure to see how far you can get, then you can go do that. Now that we have all of that out of the way, can we talk about how this game is for real actually scary? This game feels like if Benny and the Ink Machine Chapter 3 was its own spin-off game. Because just like in that chapter, Bendy is constantly roaming, and if he sees you, you better run and hide. Or else this will happen. Now thankfully, unlike in chapter 3, he can't walk through walls, cause if he could, let's just say I wouldn't have played this game with earbuds. Now if I'm being honest, that little jump scare after he catches you only got me the first time. Mostly just because it happens after the exact same amount of time every single time he catches you. Maybe if it was random based on when it happens, similar to Freddy's jump scare in FNAF when the power goes out, it would scare me more. It's kind of like how in Showdown Bandit, the jump scare would be so delayed from when you die, it wouldn't really scare you. And by the way, what happened to Showdown Bandit? After the whole Kindly Beast fiasco, we never heard anything about it again, which, if I'm being honest, probably means it was cancelled. No episode 2 announcement, no release of the free expansion... Nothing. But hey, at least this game is somewhat similar and will hopefully fill the hole in my heart. Mostly, anyway. Oh yeah, and this game has some really good sound design, and once again reminds me of Showdown Bandit a lot. The ambient sounds are very similar, as well as the music that plays from time to time. How about the visuals? Well, they look pretty similar to Benny and the Ink Machine's visuals at first glance, but taking a closer look, we can see similar to the Dark Revival trailer, the visuals seem to be upgraded and more detailed than before, which I really like as it looks even closer to the whole concept of walking through a sketch. One thing I've heard from others playing the game is that it's apparently a really fun game to pass around and have others play, and while I haven't tried this out myself, 
it sounds pretty fun. So if you got some friends with you, I recommend you follow this tweet's directions and have some fun. So in conclusion, I really like this cool little spin-off game and was a really nice thing to have while we wait for the Dark Revival. This game is available to purchase on PC via Itch, Game Jolt, and Steam, and also on mobile via Google Play which does unfortunately mean there is no way to play it on iOS yet, but I heard they're trying to get an iOS port and just weren't able to get it done in time. So iOS users, sit tight. Oh, and this game only costs one US dollar. That's what we call a masterpiece for your wallet. Links to the game pages will be in the description, and I'll see you all next time.